God of the, the simulator or the supreme being. I am not an atheist. I've never been an atheist. I've never. People are too afraid to believe that they have control over their own actions. Hi, I'm Jeremy. Hi, I'm Nick. Welcome to Cloud of Witnesses Radio. We've got a new mini series called Yes, but. The idea is that we're going to bring clips of popular thinkers, popular figures um, in the limelight, and we're going to share clips from them and their thoughts. We'll find little kernels of truth of varying sizes, and we'll kind of use that as a springboard, and we'll agree, we'll find points where we agree and say yes. But then the caveat is that we're going to find where we disagree with him in our orthodox worldview our orthodox phronema as it were and so that's the kind of idea of yes we agree but this is where you guys went off it's almost like a reaction video that's what i like about this it should be a lot of fun we are joined today uh, by three very special guests uh would you mind please we'll let ladies first of course uh and then introduce yourselves individually if you don't mind hi i'm tirza i'm actually nick's wife I'm John, and I'm one of the voice actors for the Cloud of Witnesses episodes. I'm Daniel Paul. And those of you watching this right now, you have definitely heard, you've heard John and Daniel. Um, it's just going to be an opportunity to discuss uh, some issues from a, a particular Christian perspective, you know, an ancient Christian uh, perspective by God's grace. So you guys already excited to jump into uh, maybe one of the first topics? Let's buckle yeah. up. Sound good? Okay. Yes. All right. Get right into it. Right on. I'm going to share my screen here. <laughs> this one yet. So here it goes. You've got a life. It's hard, obviously. It's like three years from now, you can have what you need. You've got to be careful about it. You can't have everything. You can have what would be good for you. But you have to figure out what it is. And then you have to aim at it. Well, my experience with people has been is... If they figure out what it is that would be good for them, and then they aim at it, then they get it. And it's strange because they don't necessarily, it's a strange thing. It's not quite that simple because, you know, you may formulate an idea about what would be good for you, and then you take 10 steps towards that, and you find out that your formulation was a bit off, and so you have to reformulate your goal. You know, you're, so you're kind of going like this as you move towards the goal. But a huge part of the reason that people fail is because they don't ever set up the criteria for success. And so since success is a very narrow line and very unlikely, the probability that you're going to stumble on it randomly is zero. And so there's a proposition here, and the proposition is, if you actually want something, you can have it. Now the question then would be, well, what do you mean by actually want? And the answer is that you reorient your life in every possible way to make the probability that that will occur as certain as possible. And that's a sacrificial idea, right? It's like, you don't get everything. Obviously, you, obviously. But maybe you can have what you need. And maybe all you have to do to get it is ask. But the asking isn't a whim or, or today's wish. It's like, you have to be deadly serious about it. You have to think, okay, like I'm taking stock of myself. And if I was going to live properly in the world and I was going to set myself up such that being would justify itself in my estimation, and, and I don't mean as a harsh judge, exactly what is it that I would aim at? Fascinating. Yes, but no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, I know it's true. I mean, there is a lot of yes in there. Yeah. There's a lot of but yeah. as well. Anyways. So. I, I, if someone has particular thoughts, feel free to jump right in. I'll just give my right off the cuff. I, I, Go for it. So much of me <clears throat> wants to agree with Peter, you know, Jordan Peterson on this, like, you can tell he's given like this motivational, you know, here's how you can turn yourself around. You know, you can, um, you can have this, what, do what, what in your life you know you ought to do or you can do if you reorient, you focus but I kept thinking to myself, I kept asking the question, reorient to what, right? Exactly. What, what's this reorientation is he asking yeah. about? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Or what he's referring to? He doesn't seem to bring it out, at least in that part of the conversation. Yeah, you know, he talks about a lot of things and a lot of it is really good, 
and very motivational but again it's kind of because he hasn't really arrived at i guess what you could say truth is in my estimation you know he's not christian he might have christian leanings but because he hasn't really you know put his flag in the ground it's kind of like it feels a little relativistic to me whenever i hear him like this is really good but you could take it in different frames of mind and it's kind of like it feels a little wishy-washy even though what he's saying is very good you guys know jordan peterson's uh i know because i feel like he's kind of a christian maybe i don't know do, do you guys know it's hard to say i don't know it's hard to yeah. follow him and i don't follow him too much yeah has he ever come out publicly and said hey i i have faith in christ or not or he said he, he has... said he said he Go has ahead, suspicions Doc. he said something along the lines of yeah it seems true or or actually uh good but to unironically believe in this thing is horrifying or or scary mm. like he's kind of broke down while, while he was saying this um and i think his hurdle and hang up is that it, it's a frightening thing for him a frightening reality whatever the reason is uh for him having that reaction he does single out christ from all the other religious figures and different religions and worldviews mm -hmm. as this person who seems to be able to get that reaction out of him and the only person who's able to get that reaction out of him interesting i appreciate jordan's thoughts mr peterson's thoughts on a lot of things but i'm i always feel like maybe it's because he's you know uh has a psychology major but i always feel like he's too afraid to commit because of all the ramifications it could have psychologically he's always afraid about hypocrisy you know what i mean like he's very afraid to unironically believe in christianity because of what it demands and, and which is very true and i'm happy he has that insight but it's almost mm -hmm. like but to not take those steps because of those fears is kind of like you know it's like a trust it's it's a it's a trust fall to some extent you know sure. and and yeah. there's going to be falls you know what i mean he, he and, even and, says it in that video right he said it's a sacrificial he knows there's a sacrificial element to a reorientation yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah i think it's interesting that he mentioned um that sacrifice because that sacrifice is orthodox you know in our life we are told to sacrifice and to crucify ourselves you know especially in, in mine and Nick's position in marriage and then having a child, you know, so there is a lot of that sacrifice, but I kept coming up with this question when he was talking and he kept, it was because he kept saying the word want and he kept saying, if you want this, if you want that, and there's a lot of things I want in life, but it doesn't mean it's good for me or even the will of God, you know? Mm -hmm. And so it is, it is a very motivational speech. It's like, go get it, go for it. If you want it, go for it, which, you know, in some ways is kind of a worldly mentality, like, you know, just go for it. But right. there is this question you have to ask of like, okay, but is this God's will? You know, I feel like that's kind of, to me, it feels like kind of the yes, but is this really what God wants for my yeah. life? Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I To bounce off that, if I may, that's exactly where I think I felt that relativism because it's very motivational, but it's kind of like, but is this God's will? You know, the, right. the bigger question of, okay, what is that reorientation? Christ, you know, we're in the Christmas season. Christ is the orient from on high in which we get oriented. Mm -hmm. So the he's, question he's the of- North Star, yeah. Exactly. So that orientation, it's like, what is it? It's good that he's a springboard for people, especially young men, to start thinking, what is my desire? What do I want? How can I get it? How can I use my will in a productive way? And I think he speaks to a lot of disillusioned mm -hmm. yeah. people today. Yeah, but yes. he doesn't lead them all the way. But he's yep. definitely mm -hmm. this middle stone, you know, that, that gets people to the next step. Hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah, the, the chief issue with... Uh, um, what he said in that clip <clears throat> was that although it is good in and of itself what he's saying uh, the issue is is that it's too vague too abstract too non-concrete mm -hmm. to the point that it, you can fit it right in with any religion and yeah. any worldview any yeah. philosophy can say yeah i agree with that i mean um a pagan can even come up to us and say yeah everything he says is 100 percent correct 
You know? John, can I piggyback on that? I, I love yeah. your point. And I was, what I was trying uh, going to say, but you, I like how you're putting that because I think it's so true and you kind of put your finger on it. To my mind, I kept, and I thought it was just maybe my own cynicism, but cynically, I sometimes wonder if Jordan Peterson, who, let's be frank, he has made a lot of money, right? He's he's a he's basically a celebrity. He has he's talked about. I've seen videos where he admits he's he he makes a lot of money. Um, and don't get me wrong, I'm not judging that at all. It's just a reality, okay? If he were to take that step, because you know he's talked about orthodoxy quite a bit. He seems very fond of orthodoxy. I think he knows and understands orthodoxy to a good extent. He spent a lot of time with. Jonathan Peugeot, who I'm assuming is, you know, able to express this pretty clearly th to him. Yes. A cynical part of me is wondering if Jordan Peterson's afraid to take that step because it might alienate half his audience, maybe more than half his audience. 75% of his audience mm -hmm. might get alienated, especially yes. if he became an Orthodox Christian. You know, what's ironic about that point is that it begs the question of what he's been preaching. What does he want, right? Is it the money? Is it the truth? Is it, you know, is it a metaphysical understanding uh, of reality, to put it in, you know, a philosopher, uh, philosopher, philosopher's terms, philosopher's words? So, yeah, it, it definitely, it begs some questions, and it's only something that he can answer and is between him and his creator. Amen. Yeah, no doubt mm -hmm. about that. Daniel, I wanna, even a little. Yeah, I want to exactly. I want to get Paul's thoughts, and and I want to yeah. just say before I, Daniel talks, I want to really fast say this. I think it's important based on what we just all just said. I hope everyone understands this is not a judgment of personally of Jordan Peterson. It's not a him. judgment on his soul, on his any of that. I have no idea about any of it, um, and, and that's between him and God, as you said, Nick. I just want to be clear about that. Yeah, Amen. We should pray for him, if anything. Amen. So I was going to say, I do, uh, uh, I was basically just essentially thinking what John was thinking, that um, his sort of like self-help stuff was really way too vague. Mm. And it could easily be like somebody who Jordan Peterson, who who believes or, you know, is a proponent of something that Jordan Peterson heavily dislikes could easily, uh, you know, be inspired by, by what he said. He could say, oh, I want to. I'm really inspired by what you said. I'm I'm a, I'm gonna overcome my fears. I'm going to uh, become like a meth kingpin or whatever, and everybody is going to fear me. I'm going to make so much money or whatever. And there's no like, it's kind of like a. He basically sure it might be a valid means, but Jordan Peterson doesn't provide an ends at all. So it is kind of ultimately uh, pointless in the end. It's kind of like a, it's like a, telling a person to cross the road, but they don't even know like where they're going pretty much. Right. It's like, okay, great. You got them across the road. Now what? You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can lead someone to a more successful life. Then what? Right. You still get old, yep. get cancer and die. Right. Yeah. You still have to face yep. your creator. Someday. Yeah. Yeah. Playing off of that metaphor, it's like he's teaching people to use their arms, their legs, their will. But the question is, what direction? And he has that vague, as we've been saying. Yeah. If I can pose a question based on this, you guys, and I want to hear, I'd love to hear from each of you on this. What What is the answer? Like what? So, you know, we talked about the yes and the but, right? We believe, you know, we're all Orthodox Christians here. Orthodoxy provides what's missing right it, it 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 informs the vagueness that he's kind of operating in in this clip what's what's the answer it's a tough question i know truth is a person as saint saint ambrose said to saint augustine uh my son the truth you are seeking for is not an idea it's not a thought the truth is a person mm. Amen. I love that, John. Yeah. That's fantastic. Amen. Yep. Yeah, Amen. I think I, I mean, obviously I would agree with that. And that um, kind of just going back to what I was saying about how I kept asking myself, like, okay, what does he mean by want, want, want? And at the end of the day, like with everything, we should 
proceed with, you know, these desires and these things we would like to happen with prayer and asking that God's will be done if it's going to happen, you know? I mean, just to say it, even this the whole podcast, we've been really proceeding forward with caution and God has just been opening door after door after door. And so it seems like God's blessing it, you know? And then obviously, you know, talking with you know priests and elders can help too to discern that. But it, it definitely is, uh, I think you have to be careful about trusting your own wants and desires because often therefore, you know, we're kind of thinking more about ourselves, you know, and when we say that question, like, what do I want, you know? To create a bridge off of what John and Tirza said, truth is a person. Your desire needs to become in harmony. It needs to be in harmony. It needs to be synergetic with the will and desire of God, right? And I, that's exactly what Jordan Peterson can't exactly put his finger on mm -hmm. you know, based off of his own worldview, you know, whatever it is, his own hangups. But for us, like you said, Jeremy, as Orthodox Christians, to answer this, what he's saying is very true. And in an Orthodox perspective, really we should be inserting our orthodox worldview to answer that question that question that he's posing and really it's very inspiring right i love that i i get this sense of you know orthodoxy provides i i like to call it scaffolding i used to you know the come from a background where we talked about scaffolding a lot the idea is is you know scaffolding of a building right it's what's up there to help support the construction process mm, yeah. right and, and orthodoxy is the scaffolding, to, to my mind, of how we can, as Tears was saying, how, how we can find out what is it, maybe not that I want, but what is it I need, mm. right? The church is there, the saints, the fathers yeah. of the church are there to tell us, here's what you need, here's how you do it, <laughs> right? Mm. It, it, it's part of the sacramental life. Pers uh, every man's purpose every man's desire and every man's um, goal is centered around persons or a person. For instance, when we look at the concept of the soulmate in the secular world or even in the new agey type uh, world, um, people are all constantly looking for the one. And that one is obviously a person. Um, mm -hmm. Others are living their lives for the sake of their family, their people, um, or they are Themselves. working to find someone, yeah, it's, it's just somebody to love. Um, everybody is looking for that universally, even if it's uh, directed towards the wrong place, that concept is still built into their nature and into their soul. And to us, that person who encompasses everything that we could ever want um, in terms of the ideal man, like what we ideally should be seeking after is Christ. It's it's the Logos himself. That person is the actual one, the actual one that we're all looking for. Amen. Amen. Daniel Paul, any thoughts and then Tirza? Oh, I was gonna I was going to pose sort of like a critique. You could argue, oh well why can't a person um let's say a hedonist, we're living for persons, right? You know, couldn't a hedonist just say, oh, the person I'm living for is myself, so I don't need anything to do with your God or whatever. But if you really look at, um, mm -hmm. if you kind of look at uh, hedonism and kind of scrutinize it a little bit more, it is ultimately not really, the person isn't really living for themselves. It is ultimately going to be towards the objects in their lives, even though mm -hmm. they say it's for themselves. It doesn't ultimately really bring anything and they're ultimately they are ultimately becoming you know uh slaves slaves to things that they like slaves to uh things that they think bring them joy but the joy is really just a, a very false and fragile thing and uh they become idols so, right, so there's creating so their own truth purpose. to that absolutely they become i think they become their own idol in a sense yeah. right yeah mm -hmm. and and the things around them are idols at any given time you know that is, that is so true i think you know what i would respond to that uh paul's i would say orthodoxy is able to say sure you can live your life for yourself right you can live in any other religion you want to but ultimately, a day will come 
when we all die and the reality of your soul before the God who created the world and the universe and everything in it has to be accounted for, right? Revelation tells us that all things that we've ever done, right? The, the book of life will be opened. And at that stage, according to Christ, according to the church, according to scripture, having lived a hedonist life, you're not going to be aligned, if, to go back to Jordan Peterson's orientation, you're not going to be oriented in the proper direction. You're going to be shooting off way over here. You know, you're missing the mark, to, to use another Christian mm. phrase. I think that Jordan Peterson, a big reason why he is so popular is because he's giving an antidote to the nihilism that so many in our generation are feeling. Their will is destroyed. The purpose in society, social values, and the whole narratives of society has been so eroded that just someone getting up in front of a crowd saying, hey, align your will to something you desire and you will find purpose. And people are like, I've never thought of that. I've never thought of like, you know what I mean? And I don't mean to mock people, but like that's how downtrodden we are sure, as a society sure. we have nothing positive as a collective whole in western society to say you know what we can all stand for this you know what this is positive everything is just like you know what? how dare you say that you're a racist you're a bigot you're a... who are you i don't believe that narrative whose narrative are you I, well, I'm... you know what i mean it's like just just mind-bendingly broken unfortunately yes. To throw in two cents. No, absolutely. I love that. To me, if there was one thing that Jordan Peterson brings to that world, to that audience you're talking about, Nick, the the audience of, hey, you know, what in the world's going on, right? Uh, a woman is a man. If she chooses to be a man, can be a woman. You know, there's all these. It's like, what does any of it mean? Jordan Peterson, step, Jordan Peterson steps in and says, discipline, rules, Live your life according to an orientation, right? He's a contrast to the the soup yeah. of yeah. modern, you know, progressivism and, and transhumanism and, and and you know this woke uh, anything goes mentality. He says no, not anything goes, and he's yeah. right about that, right? Yeah. Yes, that's so true, Jordan Peterson. But as we've talked about in this conversation, mm -hmm. it's a great conversation, guys. Really enjoyed speaking with you on this he's he's missing as john said he's missing the person right mm, he's missing purpose. truth incarnate in, in christ jesus and Amen. that's you know ultimately where we as orthodox christians say yes jordan peterson we can stand by you on a lot of things but who do okay. you say that he is yes right amen he's offering order to chaos but he doesn't know where this order comes from he doesn't know where it fits but he knows there is order he knows there is reason that there is morality there is good and there is justice these things do exist and these are categories that everybody assumes as a given and we use these categories to interpret uh, what is good what is bad what is right wrong what is logical what is illogical all these things are baked into the system and he knows this everybody does everybody has a conscience but he just has no clue where it's coming from where it's emanating all right so you guys this has been an awesome discussion really really grateful uh to our guests today it's been fantastic um we're gonna do this uh we're setting up a tradition right now it's our <laughs> first yes but episode but we're gonna go around everyone's gonna get a chance to say uh goodbye they've got about 10 seconds for their final thoughts and we'll close it on out yeah yeah sounds uh, good Perfect. So I just want to say, I'm Jeremy. This has been a wonderful conversation. I'm very grateful for all of you. And if you are interested in what Jordan Peterson has to offer, I would say come check out the Orthodox Church or go watch an interview with Jonathan Bajot and Jordan Peterson and see what you think. Hi, I'm Tirza. Thank you so much for watching and listening to our thoughts. Hello, I'm John. Thanks for watching and listening to our thoughts. I'm Daniel Paul. Thanks for watching and listening to our thoughts. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. <laughs> This is Cloud of Witnesses signing out. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye. <laughs>